Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on part two of our apothecary video and uh, we're going to be working on just some of the detail work as we're going through. Uh, everything from the reductor pistol, uh, making sure the vials and everything look pretty cool, uh, the data pads and buttons, uh, doing the scroll work on the uh, purity seals, and a little bit of blood for the blood god. So just kind of finishing up a bunch of the, the details for this guy. Uh, and we're gonna start off with our rune fang steel. Now it seems like a bit of a weird one. We're going to use the gem paints and we're gonna paint the um, the reductor pistol goodies or pixel. Um, we're gonna paint the reductor pistol goodies and it's gonna be super simple. Uh, and all we're gonna do is anything that we're going to do is this kind of gemmy kind of vial. I'm just going to go over top of with our rune fang steel uh, just to make sure, let's sneak some in here too, just to make sure we got this nice bright finish. And you'll see it's a little dull on this side here. So I'm just gonna make sure we have this super bright. Okay, so we can see now that the silver is nice and bright uh, on the reductor pistol here, uh, where we're going to be doing these these vials full of full of fluid. So I'm going to use uh, Spirit Stone Red here, which is a technical paint. It's one of GW's uh, gemstone paints, and you really have to shake it super super well, uh, just so that you get a nice kind of uh, well mixed paint. Now this one's a little different. I'm actually going to pull it straight from the pot, and I'm going to get a healthy dollop. You can see that there, a healthy dollop on my brush and then I'm going to uh, load it up here. So what I'm going to do is just the way it's kind of laying like this, it's going to lay on the bottom. So I'll put a nice healthy chunk of paint here on the bottoms. So I'll just pull that up there and then I'll lift the paint up to the top and I'll lift this paint up as well. And you want a higher concentration up at the top then the bottom. So I'm just going to draw that up like this and then I'll let that dry. Now I'm going to do the same in here as well. You know, I might as well do it here. I'll do the same on the inside as well. So again, getting a good, uh, good size dollop on there. I'm not going to thin this out on the palette and I'm just going to start at the bottom like this and I'm just going to draw it up leaving most of it up at the top, maybe doing an extra little bit of piling on that as well. Now, if I slop any onto the black, obviously I've got uh, lots of Abaddon black and Eshin gray to kind of top that up, but I just want to get that gemstone paint uh, loaded all the way up to the top for our vials. All right, I'll let that dry. Well, actually I'll do the other side here first uh, on the inside and on the outside here, and then I'll let that dry. Okay, so with all the gem effects done, you can see that the vials look like they're full of fluid uh, and it's got a nice kind of gradation to it here. And then all I'm going to do to kind of propel that illusion forward is I'm going to take a little bit of white scar here and I'm just going to do uh, dots where the light would be reflecting off the actual vials itself. So very little paint on your brush and I'm just going to do like a little dot uh, up at the top where the light would be reflecting. And then I'll do a dot on the other side as well so that we can just see the reflection of the of, of the vials there as well. Uh, inside, I'll make sure that I do one just at the top here, just where it would pick up on the light. Uh, and then one in here as well. And uh, of course, if you bone up on any of this stuff, you can just go back in with a little bad in black uh, so it doesn't have to be perfect and off we go. Now to work on the data pads, we're going to use Warpstone Glow, and that is just going to be doing a basic outline of the data pad there. And um, just going to go over that primary screen. So just thin that out on my palette there. So just go over the, the, primary, uh, the, the primary elements of the screen here. Just nice and simple, sensitive hands here. Uh, and then I'll do the buttons on the panel as well in green. So I'm just going to do an overbrush just to top the paint up on there. We will be going in here with just a shade of wash um, so that we can actually, you know, add a little bit of depth just around the outsides. But we're going to start that off with the Warpstone Glow. 
Now, when we're highlighting any kind of uh, reflective glass surface, uh, we want to make sure that we're highlighting uh, the opposite. So instead of being kind of the top right, I'm going to do the bottom left. And I'm going to do this with a little bit of moot green. So I'm just going to do just that one edge down the side. Like this. Okay, and then on top of that, I'll just do like a get most of the paint off my brush here and I'll just do a gentle overbrush of all the buttons in here. Okay, after catching the edge, I just did a very light touch up with the warp stone green again, uh, just to kind of clear off just a little bit of space here. And then I'm just going to do that life sign blip. And I'm going to just do a squiggly line like that just to make it look like there's a little bit of data on the data pad itself. Okay, moving on to the last set of kind of gem type things is going to be the sensor plate here, or sorry, the the the, the aspects, the sensor elements uh, of, of, the, uh, of his kind of suite of tools here. So what I'm going to do is do the ring around the outside, the outstanding little bump here, and of course this little sub lens down there. And then the trickier part, of course, is going to be doing it on the inside, uh, but uh, we'll make that happen. So we're gonna start with two colors. Uh, actually, we're gonna do two colors, Altdorf Guard Blue and then Lothern Blue. So let's start with the Altdorf Guard Blue and we'll just kind of base over all of the points that we want to do the sensors. Now, if you want to kind of minimize your uh, paint investment here, uh, you can do uh, the Thousand Suns Blue as well and it'll be consistent. Uh, I just do most of my gems like this. So uh, I'll start off with the Altdorf Guard Blue and I'll just kind of go around, make sure I do a couple thin coats uh, and cover all the lens elements. And then on the back side as well, I'll be doing the same thing. So uh, just on the inside piece, you can see that on the camera there, a little tricky, I'll try it from the top. Uh, we're just gonna sneak in and kind of paint that whole surface in there. All right. And then after that, we're going to do the low lights and those are going to be uh, basically the opposite of the highlight here. So we're just gonna do the Lothern blue just in and around the bottoms of each of these uh, lenses here. So a little tricky to get on camera, but we're just gonna do them on the opposite side of what we'd normally get. And then on the inside, so we can do that here as well, just reach in and kind of go around. Perfect. Now once you've got the kind of that gem effect down, um, I'm a little untidy today for whatever reason, maybe too much coffee's making the handshake, I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm going to go in with Runefang Steel here and I'm just going to go over top of um, where I want the metallics to be just to kind of tidy up uh, that little bit there. So um, sometimes a little easier to kind of paint the framework back around than it is to actually paint uh, you know, super delicately with the um, lens type effect. All right, so I'll just go in and I'll tidy that up with our Rune Fang Steel. And then finally, I'll do my little dots again with White Scar. Now, all I'm doing here again is just touching kind of the top right where the light would glint off the top of the glass or gem or what have you. So I'm just going to go in here, let the camera focus in, and I'm just gonna to touch just at the top of each of these as gently as I can. And if I blop over again, I can always go back in and touch up after. Okay, so now we're moving on to one of the last of the major details, I guess, would be uh, is this kind of sodium powered uh, lights up top here. Now, I know I could just leave it white, which would look pretty cool, uh, but he's already white already and it doesn't add a whole lot of visual interest. So I'm going to go with this Averland sunset here. I'm going to base in some yellow and I'm looking for kind of a sickly, gross kind of yellow. Um, so make sure you got your paints all shaked up nice and thick, or sorry, nice and well. So it's not so uh, crazy thick there. And I'm just going to touch in to these areas up here, just a little bit of that Averland sunset uh, to kind of make it kind of gross and sickly and all that. Now, if you mess up, you can always go back in and tidy up.
And once that's done, we're just going to do a little bit of pop here with the Eero yellow. Now, I don't want these to be crazy yellow lights, um, but I just want a little bit of pop. So I'm just going to pick out the center of the actual lights themselves uh, with some aerial yellow. So this will make things pop quite a bit uh, as the Avalanche sunsets, you know, a pretty, pretty kind of pale, stale kind of color. So I'm just going to go in and top up each of these in here. And then on top of that, I'm going to just hit the centers of these little guys here in the, in the rounded part here. Now that all those major details are complete, I'm going to use my wash here. This is my homemade wash. It's 25% Agrax Earthshade, 25% Nuln Oil, and 50% just regular cheapy floor wax that you can get from any uh, any kind of bulk, the Walmart, anything like that. So uh, I'm going to be using that wash. And instead of washing the whole model like I normally do, I'm just going to tuck a little bit of wash uh, because it's so thinned down with all the um, with all the floor wax. I'm going to tuck just a little bit of wash over top of all of my panels here. So I'm just going to see here. I'm going to just kind of run it over top and then run it around the outside of my panels. And all that's going to do is just give it just a little bit of, of, of pop um, where just to kind of contrast it out. In addition to that, we're also going to be going in with our pen, uh, our Micron pen to kind of finish it off as well. But I figured I would just take some time and kind of work our way through it. Now on the lens up here as well, it'll actually restore just a little bit of that depth that of course we didn't have previously. And I'll do it outside here like this. And then on the lights as well, just take a little bit more wash. Um, and then I'm just going to sneak it in on the lights as well. And I'm just going to go around kind of the outside to give it kind of a dirty kind of appearance. And now that I've got all those major details done, I'm just going to take my Micron pen now and I'm going to finish off the entirety of the model uh, by blacklining around uh, the structure of the model. Uh, previous to that though, I'm just going to take a little bit of time and I'm going to finish off my purity seals. Now purity seals are super easy to play with. Uh, I'm just going to pretend like I'm actually uh, writing stuff here. Uh, the dog uh, jumped into the playground and it saw a large ball and there was a rabbit that jumped out in front of the dog and it saw a bird. Okay, so absolutely nonsensical, but uh, just doing a little bit of squiggly line writing there for the purity seals, uh, which is great. And then in addition to that, um, we're going to do the panel up here. Now I picked a random word uh, well, not so random. I looked up a couple of words in Latin uh, on the old Google Translate there, and, um, you know, healer was medicum and all that, and I'm not actually going to go through with that. But um, what I did like was the Latin word for safe, and that is tutum, T-U-T-U-M. Now, tutum is an actually fantastic word because uh, it's actually got five characters, so I can start with a center character, put in my two U's, and then go from there. Now, uh, I dress up my script a little bit. I just put little serifs, for example. So I'll take that out. Uh, so I'll put in the serifs for the U's uh, and for the M's, I'll put serifs in at the top as well. So uh, talking it through T-U-T-U-M and I'll put the serifs in, uh, making sure that my U's don't look like V's. So I'll put the serifs in like this. So starting off, I'll put in that center character of the T and then I'll be able to space it out. Okay, so now we're going to work on to our name tag here. So our T-U-T-U-M, uh, this is pretty, pretty tight fit here. So I'm going to start with a T. Be very careful here. So that T is going to be right in the middle. And then I'm going to do my two U's. U. U. And then I'll do my M. And then I'll do my T. And then I'll put in my serifs at the 
ends of the U's. They don't have to be big, obviously. T U T U M. Perfect. Now, with the rest of this, I'm going to work my way around, and um, like my other models, anywhere that two colors meet, or two plates meet, or anywhere I want that kind of nice black line in, uh, the feet or the legs on the on the Primaris Marines specifically are great to black line like this with our pens. And if you get a little bit extra on, you just lick your finger and give it a white. Oh. Too much, too much, too much. And then uh, you can top it up. Now I might have to touch that up with uh, with white. But the idea is anytime two colors meet or two uh, plates meet, I'm going to use my black line pen. And that'll be even, uh, you'll see the textures in here for the, uh, I put a little bit of extra gray in there just so that this black would stand out when I penned it. And there's a framework here around the holster. So anytime you want to kind of low light or black line, uh, you can absolutely do it with the pen. And it adds a lot of depth. So for example, on this part of the pack here, with that shield on there, we can actually go in and black line it. So combined with the wash effect that's on there, you can get a very nice, uh, very dramatic color. It makes all the other colors pop. It's a bit like cell shading, I guess, or kind of like a comic book shading. And I'll do it on the metallics and everything. So I'll work my way around and uh, I'll be right back in a bit and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so with that black lining all completed now, the model is essentially done. Uh, but I did want to add a little bit of extra detail in there. Um, the model is so animated. Uh, and uh, with the Agrell and Earth on the base, I've got the link to the uh, video for that one in the description. Or I'll put it in one of the end cards there. But uh, with the model all finished up, there's loads of animation there and detail. And I want to add just one more element of kind of drama to the model. And I'm going to use Blood for the Blood God and just a big old kind of ratty, fuzzy brush here. I'm gonna use Blood for the Blood God, and I'm going to put blood all over the uh, the hand there, a little bit over the foot and on the neck of the Primaris Marine that's right there. Now, the reason I'm doing that is it's such a dramatic model as it is, the color scheme of the blood for the Blood God, the red bloody colors, uh, totally mixes in with the rest of the model. So, uh, pretty sweet. So with this guy here, I'm just gonna take uh, a little bit on the fuzzy brush and um, just tap that on my palette just a little bit. And I'm gonna start with this, uh, with, the, with the organ first, the progenoid organ. And what I like about the Blood for the Blood God is it is so, uh, it is so gross and wet, but it's vibrant and it's glossy and it looks really, really good. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do a little bit on the neck of the Primaris Marine in there as well. Uh, get a little bit on the white and all that. And maybe even a little bit on his shoes, uh, just touching with the fuzz of the, the brush here on his boots. And a little bit on the rocks, just add a little bit extra drama to it. And I mean, these, these, these extractions are not going to be these nice, clean, keep your armor, uh, you know, totally, uh, totally clean and happy. Uh, they literally are going to be these spurty, uh, bloody extractions. So uh, don't want to overdo it now because it's, it's way easy to overdo it but I just want a little bit of extra animation in there so it looks like his hands are full of uh, fresh blood from pulling out this progenoid gland. So there we go. Super easy uh, and you know, less is kind of more, but I just wanted it to look like it was actually torn out of his, um, out, of, out of his neck there. Um, and I might even put well, you know, I was going to put some on the pistol, but that might take away from the model. I think I'm just going to keep this super simple here. So uh, I think that is going to be it. And with that, our Primaris uh, Apothecary is all finished. I'll just pull this away here so we can get a better look. And 
Loving the model, uh, lots and lots of detail, lots of animation as I've said a couple times. The Grelin Earth really adds a lot of depth to the model as well. Uh, I like the white, the fact that it's kind of dirty um, and not super duper clean, which is great. And yeah, the, you know, the dirty kind of sodium lights, the, you know, the boldness of the red of the, uh, of the tabard there. He's got his, you know, shoulder pad nice and bright there as well. And yeah, looking really awesome. So that is my take on the Primaris Apothecary. And uh, if you liked it, obviously hit that like button. Um, it really helps get the video and the channel out there. Hope it was a ton of value for you guys. Uh, if you're interested in more videos like this, uh, hit that subscribe button. It, uh, it uh, takes a second. It notifies you of all the future videos. There's even a little bell right beside that subscribe button as well. And then you'll get, uh, you know, hits on all your apps, your phones, whatever. So uh, I just want to say thanks again for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video.